we're going to talk about op-eds first, how to structure them, where to pitch them, um, where to pitch them, and then we're going to talk briefly about letters to the editor. So, and I'm not, you'll notice I'm doing a handout, not a PowerPoint. PowerPoint, just briefly, why do we write op-eds, letters to the editor, what's the point? Op-eds are, it means literally opposite the editorial page. So if you go to the editorial page of a paper, the editorials, well, not anymore so much, but the editorials are written by the editorial board. Op-eds are written by either columnists or contributors like yourselves. So, so just briefly, what's, what, why are you guys here? What, um, what are you... What's that, Carla? Use your voice. Right. Kind of take back the media narrative because we, we, we can't always control what the story says. We can talk back, uh, receive the narrative. Any others? The challenge with having the media do the real story. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, that they're, they missed the story, you're trying to provide another angle that they missed, right? On, on a personal data level, I, I felt so cut off with any sense of power or anything by the whole process mm -hmm. that any way that I can assert myself mm -hmm. is so empowering. You know, even to write the letter, yeah. just to send it. Right. Well, it's like, it's like, um, what's Chrysanthi saying, or somebody was saying, it's the human face to these policies. I mean, people, like it or not, you know, these, these laws have been driven by victim stories. We've got new victims because of these laws. So, right, I mean, people care about that. Can I dispense with the microphone altogether? I wonder. I'll be effective without the emotion uh -huh. Like to bring rationality to the discussion. Oh, you. Well, you'll often want to have an op-ed piece or a letter to the editor that relates to some type of campaign yeah. that you're involved with. So right. you're often using it as a way of greasing the wheels for a piece of legislation or for some type of, uh, you know, some type of new policy yeah. or whatever. You're trying to, you use the op-ed just as a piece of a campaign. Mm -hmm. uh, otherwise, if the op-ed is just an op-ed, mm -hmm isolated from anything going on, even if it's a good op-ed and you get it published, it uh, just gets blown away still mm -hmm. by, by the rest of the coverage. Mm -hmm. I guess that maybe argues for something I wasn't going to talk about, but that the, somewhere in our op-ed is like a what you can do to the reader. Is that right, in a way? Well, it, it, it resonates with the reader so that when they hear something else going on in the area of your kind of effect, mm -hmm. they'll, they'll hook up your arguments from your <clears throat> yeah, right, yeah, true. And I mean, something related to that to me is bringing, it's a, we think of ourselves as alt altruists and we are here, but there's also a selfish motive in this, which is to bring attention, money, and so forth to our local, to local chapters, um, you know, uh, depending on how you identify yourself. And I think the other thing I think about is empowering people out there who agree with us, but are afraid to say so. You know, people who know that having somebody on lifetime, you know, for the rest of their lives on the registry who's convicted as a 16-year-old is nuts, but are, you know, are nervous about saying that. So it expresses, yeah. You say an op -ed is, is often appropriate as a rebuttal to an editorial. Sometimes we have yeah. negative editorials, right. you know, castrate them and put them in prison for the rest of their life, so and things. And an op-ed is an appropriate response to that. Yeah. And will often be printed because the newspaper wants to appear to be, you know, balance. 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 Right. That's a great point. Yeah, exactly. That's a very good point. And that's what we're trying to do in all of this is bring balance into this discussion of right. how to protect children. Mm -hmm. Right. Good. Okay. Well, those are all great. Um, so let's talk about... Now, I did this handout, I mean, in part because of my PowerPoint flavor, but also so you guys, one, don't have to take notes if you don't want to. Um, so you can focus on the discussion, but also you have something to take back with you back home. Um, so 
We think of op-eds as being written by experts, and that's generally true, book authors, lawyers, researchers, and so forth. So what, let's take that as a given, what are you guys expert in? Do, um, what do you think of yourselves as expert in? Well, we bring um, statistics that um, uncover the truth and, mm -hmm. and dispel the myths. Mm -hmm. But the news media, and, and when I say news media, I'm not talking so much about printed. Mm -hmm. It's what we see on TV. Um, but the printed does the same thing. Um, but we give an interview, and then it's chopped up and um, used for their own. And I, I personally would like to know best practice and how to get, if you agree to an interview, how do you get them to agree to telling the story mm -hmm. that you're giving them? Mm -hmm. And using these facts mm -hmm. that are facts, citable, facts that they can look up themselves. Right. Uh, and I've seen it time and time again where they don't mention anything. Yeah, well, actually, Derek Logue, I think, is going to talk about, I don't know if that was today, maybe it's tomorrow, about how to, to you know, how interviewing, basically, and stuff. Yeah, how do you get, you know, how do you stick to your talking points and that? So, yeah. And the others, we're talking about expertise and how, yeah. yeah I think we're experts in the real life uh, emotions, raw, raw emotions of having lived through. Yeah. Right, exactly, yeah. Now that's, that's right, you guys are expert in, you know how these laws, what they look like in your everyday lives. You also know better than, I mean, just being here today, it's pretty obvious, you know how the laws, you know the impacts of the laws on a policy level. So, you're policy experts. So, that's great. Um, any, so let's talk about structure of op-eds. Um, when you're reading a, you reading the paper, what's the thing you see a headline grabs you? What's the what's the thing keeps you reading? Headline is part, yeah, right, and that's a little out of your control with the media, um, because often an editor writes a headline for you. You send it in, they they write the headline, rewrite it. Okay, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, what generally can keep me reading or stop is basically the first paragraph. Yeah, I mean, right. About the first paragraph, right. Probably yeah, that's yeah, that's the most important part of the piece. So what I've done, um, it's like yeah, grabbing the reader. There are a few ways to do that. I've listed some of them here. You know, a dramatic story. Um, you know, I have one here. The morning. This is uh, this I believe was Shanna Rowan in one of the Florida papers, but um, and I, so. The morning that Donald Smith murdered Cherish Periwinkle, he went to the police to verify that his correct address was listed on Florida's public sex offender registry. Boom. Like, okay, so here's what the registry didn't do. It didn't protect Cherish Periwinkle. So that grabs you. Newshook, the recent arrest of John Burbine, level one registered sex offender. This was a Massachusetts case, by the way. Uh, charged with molesting 13 babies and toddlers, has ignited the emotions of Massachusetts residents. If these heinous and deprived Depraved charges proven in court, then the full way of the law should be brought down upon this individual. So that relates to something people have seen in the news. News hook. Um, personal story. I'm on the sex offender registry. This was in a Kentucky paper. I'm on the sex offender registry. I know well the tremendous power of those words. In 2007, I pled guilty to possession of child porn. Um, so <laughs> somebody willing to come out and say that is a brave, is a, this is, a, this is a, a, a brave writer. But that grabs readers. Um, turning conventional wisdom on end. Um, so sex offenders is another from an editorial in a science magazine. Sex, sex offender locator apps proudly boast that they can help users find sex offenders in the local area. In reality, they aren't detecting anything. And that basically goes on, that editorial, to talk about the fact that what these apps are using is in the public domain already. And we're allowing private companies to misuse data. So, um, and then finally, an anniversary. So, 11 years ago today, the Supreme Court ruled that sex offender notification laws could be applied retroactively because they don't punish offenders, but the everyday experiences of offenders and their families prove that the reasoning in that decision was wrong. So, picking an anniversary and using that. Any, well, there, and I'm not saying those are the only, you know, those are the only, uh, those are 
you know, it's a lot of the, journalists have a weird ways of spelling everything. Instead of saying paragraph, they say graph, G-R-A-F. Um, instead of saying deck, they say D E. I don't know. It's uh, I'm sorry. You know, there's an, you know, it doesn't have to be lead. It can be introduction. I should have said. Yeah, sorry. So it's just the introduction to the piece. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Go on to talk about theme. Um, anybody know what we're talking about with theme? It's, again, it's not the only way to only term for what I'm talking about. That concept I'm talking about here, but. The first thing you do is sit down and figure out in one sentence what this is about. What, what is my article about? Before you do any research, um, certainly before you try to write a lead and so forth. So, um, so that, that's, that's the theme. Um, it's like a one sentence statement of your key point. Now, um, so, you know, one thing I'll say is, uh, <laughs> and I'll talk about this in a little bit too, but like a lot of people, when they sit down to write, like how many of you guys have writer's block? Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. Yeah, and you know, the reason is, I think that um, we sit down and try to, well, one thing is we try to get perfect the first time, another thing is we try to write that perfect lead, that perfect opening, and that's really hard. I never do that because the lead comes later, like, so the theme always comes first. Kind of write your theme, and then you'll, the lead will come to you, so. Um, and I'm going to digress just for a moment into grammar for the teachers will love this, maybe the rest of you won't, but um, the best themes have an action verb in them. So that here, action verb um, is, and let me explain what it is and I'll say why. So, so and forgive me for being so elementary for this crowd, but anyway, jack hit the ball, hit is an action verb, subject, verb, object, so there's someone or something doing the action jack. There's a thing done, hit. There is a thing receiving the action ball, so action verb. As opposed to a linking verb, you know, um, what do we have? Jack is a nice guy. We have something doing the action. We have a verb, apparently is, but we don't have an object receiving the action. So it, Jack, it's kind of like an equal sign. Jack is a nice guy. It's, you know, so it's not an action verb. The reason action verbs matter is because they tell you something about the world. They keep readers more engaged because they're saying something interesting. Um, and that's kind of a thing, um, you know, as a journalist, I always pay attention to. Am I actually saying something, like, or am I just saying, this is a look at this topic, which isn't so interesting. What I'm saying is this X affects Y, that matters. So, does that make sense? Is, it, is that clear? Okay, all right. So here are some examples of good themes with action verbs. So. I hope I put this on your handout. The public sex offender registry, yes. Hides the real issues in preventing sex crimes against children. It's a great theme, it's one sentence, action verb. Public sex offender registry is the thing. Hides is the, is the verb, the action. Real issues are obviously receiving the action. Uh, another example, we should punish those who commit repeat sex crimes, not the entire group of people in the sex offender registry. One sentence, boiled down, you know, yeah, it's a great, um, core for a story. Punishment that doesn't consider how to reintegrate offenders hurts all of us. So, um, so we're going to do an exercise. Um, go to page six. There is an edit, there is an op-ed on page six, and I'm going to take like um, five minutes and read it and pick out the theme. There are one, there may be two sentences that could be themes, but if you wouldn't mind, are most people done, ready? Yeah, okay, great. Okay, what do you say? Underlying thing that the phrase that we use takes a village. Yeah, that captures it, doesn't it, yeah. Is there one sentence here that captures that for you? No. Or anybody else? No. Right, quality and stability of young children's relationships. Quality and, is that right? The quality and stability of young children's relationships affect material aspects of their development. Everybody agree? Yep, that's right. That's great. You guys are, it's too easy. Um, and so the, the third sentence, third sentence, the quality and stability of young children's relationships affect virtually all aspects of the development. I don't have a problem with that, but I also thought that the first sentence of the second paragraph was Surrounded child with secure relationships. Yeah, that's true. And she will support incorporating environment. Yeah, the first sentence of the second paragraph, David is saying, right. 
Oh, the lead? Kind of. Uh, um, it's... You know... Yeah, it's all about um, it's all about the whole community, right? Yeah, and so the, one thing I didn't say is your lead's gonna your theme is gonna be usually in your first or definitely not later than your second paragraph. You want people going right up front what you're talking about, right? Don't bury your lead. Often people do that. Um, so 